engines, and three medical units. The term strike team was developed by the fire service in the original ICS design. The term does not always fit other applications, but the concept of the use of teams certainly does. This concept is also used in the formation of squads and platoons in other disciplines. Requirements for a strike team. All resources must be of the same kind and type. Must have a leader, must have communications between the resources and the leader, must have transportation as needed, and must operate within a span of control limits. Example of a nationally recognized strike team. Five fire engines, type 1, or three type 2 bulldozers. Strike teams have proven to be very valuable for the use in large wildland incidences. In some kinds of incidences, strike teams are regularly used for managing engines, hand crews, and bulldozers. The use of strike teams in other application areas is more limited. A requirement for all task force and strike team leaders is that they must have a leader and common communications. Depending upon the level of organization established for the incident, Task force and strike team leaders will report to the incident commander, the operational section chief, or to a division or group supervisor. There is an advantage of using a task force and strike team. One is it enables more effective resource use planning, provides an effective way of quickly ordering just what is necessary, reduces radio traffic by communications going to a task force or strike team leader rather than to each of the single resources increases the ability to expand the organization for large incident operations while maintaining good span of control and provides close resource control and accountability. There is a status that each resource must be in. There are three of them. One is assigned resources working on a tactical assignment under the direction of a supervisor, available resources ready for deployment, and three, out of service, resources that are not ready for availability or assignment status. Reasons for being out of service could be mechanical, personnel need rest. In addition, some situation resources could be out of service for environmental reasons, darkness, weather, financial, exceeded allowed overtime costs. Resources can go out of service during an active assignment for mechanical or staffing reasons. Usually, resources of out of service for other reasons will be located at an incident base or at a camp if these facilities have been established. Changing resource status. Resource status on an incident is maintained and changed by the supervisor who has the resources under assignment. On large incidences, a resource unit, if established, will also maintain status on all resources assigned to the incident. Resource status unit will, not on its own authority, change the status of resources. All changes in the status that last for more than a few minutes must be communicated to the appropriate organizational elements. The flow chart shows how the resources status changes are made through a major incident organization. The individual who makes the status change is responsible to make sure the change is communicated to the person or unit responsible for maintaining overall resource status at the incident. Depending on the levels of activation within the incident organization, Changes in resource status may be made by the incident commander, operational section chief, division, or group supervisors. Information about the status change will be passed to the resource unit of the planning intelligence section. Normally, persons who can change status of resources on an incident could include the person in charge of a single resource, a task force or strike team leader, a division or group supervisor, the operational section chief or incident commander. Resource status keeping systems. There are several status keeping methods or systems which can be used to keep track of resources and incidences. There's the manual re record keeping on forms. The ICS provides many forms to keep track of the resources. Some examples are the initial attack form 201, the check-in list which is form 211, and the assignment list for divisions form 204. There is the card system. Several methods are available which allow for maintaining status of resources on cards. One of these systems has different colored T-shaped cards for each kind of resource. The cards are formatted to record various kinds of information about the resource. The cards are filed in a rack by current location. Magnetic symbols on maps or status boards 
magnetic symbols or icons are sometimes used. These can be prepared in different shapes, sizes, colors, with space to pencil in resource designators. The symbols are placed on maps or on boards which have locations designated to match the incident. Computer system. A laptop computer can be used with a simple file management or spreadsheet program to maintain information on resources. These systems can be used to compile, check in information, and then be maintained to reflect current status.